In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to use a new AI tool in Photoshop to turn this image into this. Now this tool in Photoshop has largely gone unnoticed when it came out in 2024 because of the flurry of other AI attention to the new generative AI fill, the remove tool, different things that Adobe was doing with Firefly, their AI engine, but this tool can be very helpful so that you can change this doll looking image into this very quickly. And if you'll notice, there are many different things that changed along the way. We didn't just pump up things, there were a lot of unique unique and very specific areas that were edited. Without further ado, let's dive in to how this new AI tool works and what you can do with it as well. So here we are in Photoshop and we can see this is with the adjustments applied. I grouped them together under AI edits. If we turn that off, we can see this was the original image. And if you look really close, you'll see some different areas were touched. For instance, take a look at the driveway that was brought down in exposure while the house was brought up in exposure. And if you look at the grass, you'll see that the grass also had some improvements in its color. And also there were some colors that were improved in the sky as well. And this was all done quickly using this new tool in Photoshop. Now you'll notice if I expand this, that there are different adjustment layers that were made here. I'm gonna show you how this was all done using this new tool. So let's start from scratch and let's just shut this off. Now, what I'll do is I'll just place this layer, the original layer, I'll just have that selected as though this is all that we brought up in Photoshop. And this is very useful if you only have a single exposure to work with. In this case, this was exposing for the sky so that it gets a very accurate color. Now, normally, as you know, I might be doing some exposure blending, something that I show in my course on pro exterior photography. And by the way, if you're not familiar with my courses, I do have courses on doing real estate state photography for interiors, expert editing, the exteriors, also videography for real estate. And I also have written best-selling books on real estate photography. And I have links to all that down in the description for this video. But let's move on to this new tool. What you wanna do is go over here to where your brush tool is and click and hold that down and you'll see a variety of different brushes. There's one here that's been in Photoshop for a long time that's pretty much been useless even when they did some updates to it in 2024 except for one feature that's largely gone unnoticed. So you wanna go over here and select that adjustment brush tool. Now you might be familiar with this and in its default state, you could select the different type of adjustment that you wanna make. In this case, let's say that we wanna bring down the exposure of the driveway and the street. So what we wanna do is select an exposure adjustment. So if we do that, that's fine and we could start brushing that on, but that's not what we should do for this new AI tool. To implement the AI portion of this to automatically detect what we need to edit, what you need to do is select this up here and that then chooses the object. Now, sometimes you have to toggle this on and off, little bug in Photoshop. Once you have it selected though, you'll notice as I'm mousing over, it's automatically selecting areas, just like you would be using the object select tool from the quick select menu. But in this case, we're not able to draw a polygon, but it still automatically detects these areas. So in this case, we'll automatically detect, as it shows here, the driveway, which has the sidewalk and the street. I'll just click there, and immediately you can see over here, it made a new exposure layer, and it brought up the properties for it. Now by default, it brought that exposure up really high. I don't want it high, I want it lower, so I'm just gonna bring that slider down, and now we've dropped the exposure. So I can see here, this is with that adjustment, this is without it, and you can see it was pretty much automatic. Now, I wanna do something with the yard. I also wanna do something with the sky and the house, and I'm gonna do the house last because it's gonna show some flaws in this tool, and then I wanna show also a bonus on what you can do to really pump this up. All right, now let's do the yard. I'm going to now go back over here. I still have this tool selected, that adjustment brush. But in this case, what I wanna do is change the color of the grass so that it's not so burnt looking. In this case, what you would do is you would select an adjustment of color balance. Once you do that, and once again, you might have to toggle this little selection tool on and off to start getting it to work again. Small bug, I'm sure that Photoshop, Adobe is gonna have fixed. 
But let's select the yard. Notice what it's done. Just by selecting a yard, it knew to select all the yard, including this little patch of grass off to the side. Once you have that selected, you just click, and now it made a color balance layer over here. I don't want to use these default settings that it has right now. What I want to do is get rid of the warmth that's in there. So I'm going to bring those reds down. I'm going to bring this up a little to the blue and then this slider into the green. And you can see now that I've got better looking grass. If I were to take this layer and toggle that off and on, then I can see the adjustment. Now, if this adjustment is too strong on any of these adjustments that you're doing with these layers, this is the beauty of using this in Photoshop as layers because now I can change the opacity of that layer. If it was too strong, I can bring the layer opacity down, but we'll leave it at 100% to have the full adjustment. Next, I'd really like to pump up that sky just a little bit with some vibrance. So what would I do? Well, with the adjustment brush selected, the adjustment I'm going to select would then be for vibrance. Vibrance, as you may know, is different from saturation in that vibrance only affects the muted colors, not all of them. So where the colors are muted in the sky, we're going to get a little added punch. So I'm going to select vibrance. And once again, you may have to toggle this off and on to get that quick select. But when you do, you can see I can now select just the sky. I'll click in here and now a new vibrance layer has been selected. The default went to 100. I don't want that. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. So I just get a little added punch. And now we can see what it was like before and now after that adjustment. Now for the hard part that's going to show a little bit of a flaw when using this tool, and that's going to be when I select this house. Now I could bring up the exposure of the house, but in this case, by using a brightness adjustment, it's going to take only the dark pixels and work with that. So it's like bringing up the shadows, but it overlaps between the highlights and whites within the tonal range. Anyways, what we'll do now is with that adjustment brush, we're going to select a different adjustment and that's going to be brightness and contrast. When I do that and toggle my little tool off and on again to select it, I'll go down here and select the house. If you look really close though, you can see that the mask is overlapping into the sky. Bit of a problem. We're going to fix that. So we'll select the house and you can see it's way too high and also too contrasty. Well, I'm going to bring the contrast down to zero. We don't want to change the contrast. We just wanted to change the brightness. And let's say that we wanted to make it bright in the dark areas. Don't worry about the real light areas yet. But you can see that's kind of where I'd like that to be. Now, if we zoom in here, we can see that we've got a problem where this did some overlap into the sky. And it also didn't quite get this area of the awning. So this is now where you might have to do some manual stuff. So it is a mask, so I can edit this as I want. I can go here and for instance, draw a polygon around this area where I don't want then the sky to be. I can just put this polygon right like that, hit the delete key, that area is fixed. To fix the awning, then I would just do the opposite. I would select the awning like this and then do alt delete in there and that fills it in. Still not quite right here around the edges, but it's also too bright in other areas. But once again, this is a mask. So I can take my eraser tool and I'm going to use a 30% flow and using that, then I can start tapping in areas that I just don't want that much exposure to be. So you can see that's taking care of it. I also might want to add this to other areas. For instance, the fence is all funky here. So I'm going to take the brush, but doing this, I have to make sure that now I'm not using the adjustment brush. I want to use the regular brush tool. And with a 30% flow, now I'm going to brush in some of these other areas over here to fix this fence, maybe brighten up those trees just a little bit. Also around here to get those bushes in and there. Now I've got something that's definitely a little bit better, but not quite ready for release to the client. There's a lot that I like in here, but there's just a little bit more that I want to show you with this bonus to really pump that up. But before we do, let's just revisit this where this is where we were. Then we brought down the exposure of the driveway, the sidewalk and the street very quickly using this new AI selection with the adjustment brush. Then we changed our color balance of the yard to this. We put some vibrance in the sky and then we brought the exposure up of the house. And also, by the way, the neighbor's house also. Now it's time for the bonus. 
What you can do here is use some of the benefits of Adobe Camera Raw to really now pump this up. And what we want to do is stamp an entire layer from all this, and we can do that by doing Control Alt Shift E on Windows or Command Option Shift E on a Mac. I'm going to do that at the very top layer, and you can see now I've got this one layer. Now I could turn everything else off, and you can see I'm now just working with this layer. Doesn't really matter though, but this is what we're going to use in Adobe Camera Raw. Now with this, this is the key right click on that layer and you want to convert it to a smart object. This will give us a history where now we can go back and edit that some more. Now we want to go up to filter and then camera raw filter. Now it's as though we were working in Lightroom. When Adobe Camera Raw comes up, you've probably used this before, it's almost the exact same thing. So now I can make some other adjustments to this. In fact, I can use other presets that I've used in uh, Lightroom Classic for whatever I'd like to do. So I could do an ex a standard exterior bump like I do, but in this case, since I did so many other adjustments, I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna, for instance, bring down the highlights just a little bit more. I'm gonna do these manually instead of using a preset. I do want to bring up the shadows just a tad, and I really don't want to add any whites, but I want to really richen this up by lowering some of the blacks like that. Also bring in just a little bit of clarity and maybe just a slight amount of contrast in here. So now we can see if these adjustments had much effect. I could turn them on and off by using the eye icon here. I could hold that down. See, that's without it, that's with it. This is then without it, that's with it. But I can also just at this point say OK, and when it applies these then, I can also shut off those filters by using the eye icon on the smart filter. And if I need to go back and change it, I can double click on Camera Raw Filter here. It'll bring back up Adobe Camera Raw, and I can change it. For instance, I might say, you know what? I did want to put some white. So let me add the whites up just a little bit. Maybe I'd like to see the shadows increase just a little bit more and bringing down those highlights even more. Whatever adjustments I'd like to make to it, I can still come back and do those and say OK again because we had converted it first to a smart object. But the key to this, before ever getting to that bonus point, if we shut this off, this is what we had compared to here. And it was using that adjustment brush with object selection. It won't work well in all cases compared to maybe doing some exposure blending or other techniques I show in my courses where you would capture the proper footage first to make a really well impactful image. But when you have something like this, you can play around with it, you can see what might work well for you, and then you know in various cases what tool to use for the job.